Today I'm going to be dealing with a formal letter writing. And I wanted to ask the question, uh, what is a formal letter? What do you know about formal letters? Hello, anyone? All right, Julian, a formal letter is a letter that is professional, okay? All right, Marjorie is saying a business letter. All right, anybody else? What comes to mind when you hear a formal letter? All right, when you writing about someone or reporting? All right, anybody else? All right, but uh, professional, Timey says professional and very good. All right, so you know we are dealing with a uh, professional letter. All right, this is not the, the type of letter that we would write to our friends, you know, our family members or cousin or wherever like that. You know, when you're writing, you know, it's writing to, you know, in a professional manner. All right, so and dealing with that today, you know, we're looking at, this and this is a very vital skill that you know you need to know. All right, a formal letter is one written in an orderly and conventional language and follows a specific stipulated format. All right, these letters are written for official purposes only, such as writing a letter to a manager, to the HR manager, to an employee, to the principal of the college or school, to a teacher, etc but we do not use formal letters for personal use, such as writing uh, to our family, relatives, or friends, all right? So a formal letter writing uh, format requires some specific rules and conventions, and we're going to look at that. And also the language of the letter should be very professional, all right? The format, uh, well, we will see examples of the format, you know, as we go along. All right, see, Dylan, the overall style of letter depends on the relationship between the parties concerned. Very good. Or from uh, one company to another. So, you know, at the end of the day, uh, that it depends upon your audience. All right, the audience, all right, for uh, for what you are writing, all right, will determine the the kind of letter it is, all right? So you know that you're writing, uh, let's say this, uh, you know, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, you know that this isn't, you're, you're not writing this business letter, all right? You're writing a different kind of letter, all right? But you know, the same language that you use when you're referring to your, your family or cousins and the letter will change drastically if you're writing uh, to, you know, your principal, you know, or your, uh, your boss. You know, because it's the relationship is different, like Dylan is saying. So the relationship, because it's a professional relationship, all right, you are going to write in a professional manner. So very important that we understand who our audience is, all right? And that determines what we do, all right? And, and writing, and there is this acronym that I always use, it's called RAFT. And RAF stands for rule, audience, format, and topic. So whenever you're writing, all right, whether it be a letter, whether it be an essay, you know, whether it be any, any type of uh, piece of writing, all right, you need to be guided by who you are as the author, what role are you playing, all right, in writing this particular piece. And you're also going to be thinking about who am I addressing, you know, or who will be my audience, who will be my reader, all right? Because that will determine, you know, what I am going to uh, include inside this this uh, piece of writing, all right? The format, of course, all right? The what shape will this type of writing take, all right? Essay, or letter, you know, poem, whatever like that, and then you know, of course, a topic. All right, where's, where exactly am I addressing in this uh, piece of writing? All right, so here we have parts of a, <laughs> we're going to be dealing with the parts of a formal letter. 
All right, and I have on the screen, you know, just something to keep in mind, you know, the, the car, all right? And using the car as an analogy, all right? We always think about the various parts of the car are needed in order for it to function, all right? You have all of the different parts, all right? Because if there's any part that is missing, then you know uh, something could, you know, go wrong with the car, all right? It will not be functioning in the way that you want it to. All right, so everything have to be in place. Everything have to be, you know, just right in the right order, or you're going to have problems. And it's the same way when it comes down to uh, the letter writing. All right, formal letter writing. You know, because they have rules. All right, so you must have all of the parts in place. You know, in the right positions. All right, because. Uh, at the end of the day, that is the only way in order for it to, to function effectively as the, the, the piece of writing uh, that it is. All right, so we have these various parts and we're looking at the parts of the, the formal letter. All right, so first of all, all right, we have the heading. All right, the heading contains the return address with the date on the last line. All right, and we will be looking at examples of the heading, you know, so you will have the your PO box and you will have, you know, your, your, the location, you know, the country in which you reside, all right, and you will have the date, all right? Anybody knows what comes after the heading, all right? And what would the heading be called? Sorry, I should ask that question first. What would you call the heading of a formal letter? What's another... Uh, Word for that. Address. Okay. But we are dealing with a particular type of letter, all right? So we are dealing with uh, a formal letter, all right, which is a professional letter, business letter. So what would uh, the heading be? You have to be more specific than just address. All right, Florenta is saying, all right, inside address. All right, what would uh, an name for heading be? All right, no, it wouldn't be inside address. Uh, it wouldn't be uh, the salutation, all right? I'm talking about uh, the alternative for the heading. What would we call that? No, it wouldn't be a salutation. A nice try. All right, ready to give you a hint. All right, it's address. Well, he said address. All right, but what? All right, very good, Alicia. I see it. All right, it's the sender's address. All right, so you have to send the sender's address uh, or at the end of the day. All right, that would be another, I guess, word for the heading in this letter format. And what comes after? Oh, sorry. Let's let's move on and look at something else. <clears throat> All right. So we know after the sender's address, and the sender's address would be your address because you're writing the letter. We know after that we have the recipient's address. All right. This is uh to the person you know uh, and, and place that you're addressing the letter to. So you have uh, this is address you are sending your letter to. Be sure to make it as complete as possible. All right, so it gets this destination. You have to be specific. All right, so you always want to include title names such as doctor if you know them. All right, and this is like uh, uh, the address. It's usually on the left hand margin. All right, so. It would be good to skip a line after, you know, your, uh, after the sender's address, all right? Then at the end of the day, you want to skip a line and then have the greeting after that, all right? Then we have the salutation, all right? So we know the salutation, uh, another word for salutation is what? What's another word for the salutation? All right, Tommy says greetings. Anybody else? All right, Ashka, greetings. Florenta, greetings. Marjorie, 
Julian, greetings. Very good. Yes. All right, so salutation. All right, and it's on the screen. <laughs> Our greeting. All right, and the business letter is always formal. All right, so you're not going to say, hey, you know, you're not going to say, uh, just start off with how you're doing. You know, you ain't going to start off with what's up. You know, you're going to start off with there. All right. And then the person's name. All right. So you once again, you have to make sure I include their title. All right. Such as Miss or Mrs. Mr. or Doctor. So their Dr. So and so or their Mrs. Jones or their, you know, uh, Mr. Joaquin or, you know, their uh, principal role. All right, so at the end of the day, if you're unsure about the person's style, then you just use their first name. All right, so that's the salutation. Hey, Mr. Tucson. Yes, ma'am. Just to cl um, clear up something you said with the salutation, can you go back, please? Yes. Um, this is for the business letter, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, you said to use. I don't know if that's a typo there. To use their first name. Actually, the title should be before. Um, yes. It should be yeah. Uh, um, in the business letter handbook, I think mm -hmm. it says if you're not familiar with the, um, if you don't know the name of the person you're writing to. Um, you would actually use dear sir slash madam, or if you uh -huh. were to fail, you'd say dear sir or, you know. So, dear sir, um, madam. Yeah, but they don't use the first name in the business letters. All right. Thank you, yeah. Mrs. Stu. Hmm? So the first name is using a friendly letter, eh? Right, right. Mm-hmm. Friendly. Yeah. yeah. So definitely, uh, I hope you guys heard. All right. So it's if you do not know the name of the individual, their sir slash madam would be what you use. All right. But definitely you will start off with there. All right. And you go from there. All right. So of course, the body assembly, that is the meat of the letter. All right, so you want to make sure that uh, your body addresses the issues that you are going to talk about and, and, and what you're addressing. And at the end of the day, it's always good to start off uh, with the sentence that gives the purpose for why you're writing. All right, so if it's a complete letter, you're saying, well, uh, there, Mr. Jones, I'm writing to you to complain about a particular issue or to report you know, a particular incident that I uh, experienced at your restaurant. So that very first sentence gives this, uh, the, the, the purpose for why you are writing this letter to the individual, all right? Then we also have the complimentary clause, all right? And it is that short and polite mark that ends your letter, all right? The clause begins, all right, at the same uh, justification as your date and one line after the last body. All right, so it's always uh, such as things such as thank you or sincerely yours. And then after that, you will have your name at, you know, the, the bottom of it, right? After thank you or, uh, you know, sincerely yours, Mr. So-and-so. All right, so I hope you guys can see it. You can see it from your end, I don't know. Yeah. All right, so definitely we have a picture of it, all right, for your perusal so you can look at it. All right, because I have an activity where we will actually uh, seek to identify the various parts so we will see who have been really paying attention. All right, but we have a picture of the formal letter here. All right, so at the very top, you know, examples include uh, job applications and business letters. So plan out your letter and ask yourself. So you always want to ask yourself, you know, uh, these questions. Why am I writing this letter? 
all right? And this deals with the purpose, all right? So remember Ralph, to the, Ralph again, all right? Why am I writing uh, this letter? And then you also want to ask, who is my audience? Because that question is very, very important because it determines exactly the, the, uh, the mannerism. It, it determines at the end of the day uh, what you are going to say, how you are going to say it, the language you are going to use, all right? Because, you know, the, the language that you use, all right, in a letter to your, your, your family member or a letter to your, your friend will be uh, very different from the language that you would use you know, with your boss or with someone that you will hopefully become, hopefully become your boss, you know, or someone that you have a professional relationship with. All right, so who is my audience? Uh, third question you will want to ask yourself, what response do I want? So what is the purpose? All right, why am I writing this letter? Who is my audience? What response do I want? So at the end of the day, what do I want uh, this individual to do? for me, all right? So we definitely have uh, at the right hand your full address and the date, all right? So for us, we will have ha the PO box. And then under that, all right, we will have the Nassau Bahamas. Then we will skip the line and then we will have our date. All right, and then the left hand side. So after what we call the ascenders address, we have the receiver's address or the recipient's address on the left hand side. And we see that the person that they're addressing this to is Mr. D. Taylor. All right, the company that uh, he represents is Taylor Games. Then we have the address of the company. All right, and uh, basically we have, we will have the PO box and all of that as well. So we have the, the senders and the receiver's address and then we're looking now at the, the greeting. All right, so in, hey, Mr. Taylor. All right, it's not, hey, Mr. Taylor. It's there, Mr. Taylor. All right. And then, uh, we could skip the part of reference with, you know, the re because we're not looking at that. And you're not required to have that on your level. Sorry, I think I pressed something, okay. So, you know, at the end of it, you have your opening paragraph after a salutation, and like I said, you want to make sure that you say the purpose for why you're writing uh, this letter. Then you have your paragraphs, all right? Your main paragraphs, and you want to explain what happened in more detail or whatever it is that you're trying to do, make sure you are as specific as possible, all right? And giving details and the body of, of your letter. Then you have your conclusion, all right, and you close it off. And then, you know, finally, at the end of the day, you see the your sincerely, all right, and you will have your name at the bottom of that. So uh, give me a second because I want to pull up uh, another part, and hopefully we can be able to go on with
trying to see if it can come up. Sorry. No problem. Okay. I'm trying to see if I can get the uh, activates. So give me a second. Yeah. started right now and one thing I want to do is to actually get rid of the sound because it kind of gets in the way of what I want to do with you guys today give me a second hopefully that works all right so can you guys tell me uh, on the left hand side we have the and we have the inside address and the outside address. Can you guys tell me what does that arrow really point to? Is it pointing to the inside address or the outside address? Julene said, I can't see anything. Anybody else having issues? All right, uh, it may be, uh, I guess, a little bit small. I'm saying uh, Basically, it's on the side. That's the arrow that leads from uh, the outside address uh, to the portion, like right automatically on the right hand on the right hand side of it. I don't know if you guys can see it. If you can't see it, then I guess we'll have to skip the activity. Yeah, Mr. Tucson. Mr. Tucson. Yes? I'm saying content can't be displayed. Oh, wow. OK. It's been on my end. No, everybody can see it. That's what it says. Okay. All right, then we'll just have to. We'll just have to skip the activity because of the technical, technical difficulties we're having with that. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Let's just move on with the PowerPoints.
that we had originally. Uh, all right. Yeah, I had to really cancel the activity because they weren't really seeing it. Mm. All right, so I'm going back to where we, we stopped. Mm-hmm. All right, so that's basically where we stopped. All right, so I want to give you some additional tips to keep in mind. All right, so you, like we already said, to address or greet the concerned person properly. All right, using their sir or madam. That's if you don't know, you know, their name. So always mention the subject of writing the letter. All right, so you always gotta make sure, like I said before, in the first portion of it, the, the very first sentence, all right, right after the, the greeting. All right, you are going to say the purpose for why you are writing this letter. So you want to make sure that you are concise, all right, and you want to make sure I include that reason, all right, when that first sentence of your paragraph, all right, and the body of it, all right, and the tone of the letter should be very polite and not harsh, all right. So you gotta be careful of the language that you use, all right, and the way in which you phrase, you know, your statements. All right, that is in a very uh, polite way. All right, you can, at the end of the day, yeah, uh, Julian, I, Joshua, I switch to the original uh, PowerPoint. So you want to be uh, sure that you use the right tone when you're writing the letter. All right, so write in the proper form, format, all right, and make sure that it is, uh, Presented, you know, with care. All right, make sure that you mention the address and date correctly. All right, so you also got to make sure that you uh, mention the name and the designation of the recipient recipient correctly. All right, so make sure that you have all your, like they say, your ducks in a row. All right, and always close with gratitude. You know, so even though you're frustrated, all right, or wherever it may be, you still want to close with gratitude because that's the polite way, all right, of doing it. All right, and like I said, always remember to use RAF. Always remember that uh, you have to know the purpose, all right, of why you're writing. All right, so. Formal letter style is appropriate, and formal style, all right, uh, can be appropriate, all right. So the formal style, all right, normally a composition, all right, a report, a letter to somebody you do not know personally, whereas uh, informal is that letter to your friend, all right, and you know that the languages will be different depending on what you are uh what the topic is all right and who you are addressing the letter to so uh remember no contractions all right and what do i mean by contractions anybody know what i mean by that what are contractions
What do I mean by contractions? Yes, to make a word shorter, like don't. Very good example. All right, very good. Uh, yeah, Shamia, I don't understand how that happened at all. All right. So, I do not think there is an excuse for the treatment I received. All right, that is correct as opposed to what? Okay, well, I have, I don't think there is an excuse for the treatment I received. So you don't want to really have contractions uh, and that. And then, you know, formal set phrases, you know, like almost cliches, words that we would, you know, definitely say, I look forward to hearing from you. All right, and you would get that at the end. All right, I look forward to hearing from you. The formal greetings, as we spoke of, all right, the complete sentences all right so we should consider redoing all right the short window the space so what would be an incomplete sentence to this one if you were actually putting an incomplete sentence how would that look and you all did this like just a day What would be uh, the example of a complete sentence using, we should consider redoing the shop window display? Mm -hmm. I was trying to tell them, give me an incomplete sentence, we should consider redoing the shop window display. Because if this is a complete sentence, people will probably have a different uh, sentence. Uh, and you don't want to have an incomplete sentence in your formal letter writing, all right? That's a no-no, that's a negative. So you have to make sure that you have uh, your subjects and your verbs, all right? You have to have complete sentences. All right, and you have, uh, at the end of the day, use of passive voice, the local sports center were open in the last 10 years. Then you have the formal connecting words, all right? In addition to this, many people feel the police are underfunded. So in addition to this, all right, you want to have your uh, transitional words and phrases, all right? And your formal letter as well. I see. Mm. All right. So we have our phrasal reference. And it should be coming up shortly. Okay, I could maybe give a problem here. All right, so uh, you guys can see it because I it look like some people are still having issues. All right, good. Thank you, Priyana. All right, so uh, we have a useful phrasal reference here, all right, that at the end of the day, these are common phrases uh, and useful phrases that you use as you write your formal letter. You have, of course, the greeting. Then we have the reason for writing. I am writing, or I am writing with regards to all right, so we have that, uh, and that would be where. Where would you have 
uh, I am writing to or I am writing with regards to? Where would you include uh, that phrase? Yes, they definitely have it in the intro and the first sentence in the introduction. All right, no, it wouldn't be the greeting. All right, because the greeting is simply uh, their sir slash madam or their Mr. or Mrs. So and so. All right, so you will definitely have that in the introduction. All right right after the greeting and then we have i would be grateful if i wonder if you could all right this is also a phrase that are useful in using uh when you and writing your your letter as well all right so we have that and referring to their letter if they wrote a letter to you prior all right you would say us say i started in your letter all right, regarding or concerning, so regarding the, the letter that you sent me uh, recently, I blah, 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 or whatever like that, then you have your closing expressions. All right, like I said, those cl cliches that we sometimes use. All right, I look forward to hearing from you. All right, so definitely as we see you guys produce uh, your letters, we want to see, you know, uh, statements like that. I look forward to hearing from you. All right, because that carries a very formal tone with it, all right? And that is, you'll find that in a lot of letters as well. Then we have, of course, the signing of the complimentary clause as well. So let's look at if we could, uh, Move on and see. All right, so definitely you see examples of what you would want to avoid. Like this is okay when you're writing that letter to your friend. You can use these things, all right? Because the relationship is not a professional relationship, all right? So there's something else I've got to tell you, all right? That of, that contraction there would be okay. But if it's that uh, formal letter, then you wouldn't want to have that there. All right, so we have informal set phrases. Thank you for your letter. Uh, that would be different. All right, informal greetings and letters. There are some. All right, so you know that would be different, and we would change that to what? What would we change there are some to if this was we was writing to our, let's say our boss? How would you change that to something that's more formal? Okay, I see Triana saying Mr. Sam. Anybody else, how would you change it to uh, something that's more formal? If you're writing this to your boss. All right, Marjorie, dear Dr. Sam. <laughs> All right, anybody else? Dear Mr. Dear Sir, Madam, Dear Sir. All right, so definitely good uh, suggestions there. All right, now we know for sure that we would want to go with uh, Sam's last name. So we would, uh, let's just say we invented a name for him. All right, and we would just go with Dad, Dr. 
joints. All right. So that's a that's a good one. All right. So very good. All right. So we have the example of the incomplete sentence where it says, "Great news about your brother." All right. You wouldn't have that. <coughs> Sorry. You wouldn't have that incomplete sentence. All right. So how will we change that name? Uh, so how will we change? Sorry, not the name. How will we change the sentence? Great news about your brother. How would you make that more formal? Okay. Okay, all right. Okay, I see you guys, good. Very good. All right, then we have uh, phrasal verbs. All right, so in your formal letter, you will not have go on. All right, you'll have continue. And then, of course, you have the connecting words. So instead, well, I think that's all I wanted to say. <laughs> what would we have in exchange for that in a formal letter? Well, I think that's all I wanted to say. What would you include? Or what would you take out? Or how would you change this? What would you use as a substitute for that? <coughs> OK. Come on, final question before you go. <clears throat> if this is at the end, what would we uh, close it off by saying? What transitional word or phrase that we would use? We would use at the end. <clears throat> Thank you, that's all I wanted to say. Hmm. I don't know if I would put that there. But you can't go wrong with saying, you know, uh, finally, <clears throat> or at the end of the day, thank you so much for your, attentive, your attentiveness or something, something that will be more, be more formal, all right? But definitely a nice try, all right? You wouldn't say, well, I think that's all I want to say because that sounds very unprofessional, all right? But with that said, uh, make sure you guys sign the I click on the attendance link and then you are free to, to leave. <clears throat> but definitely in conclusion, all right, is a good way to end off as well. <clears throat>